Okay, so here we have the ophthalmologist's office over here. You might have noticed that there's no patient in the seat, because today the patient is actually a pair of eyes. Let's take a look at this pair of eyes over here. So light comes in, of course, through the eyes. It then goes through the optic nerve, cranial nerve too. They cross paths at the optic chiasm to the optic tract. Then they go to the lateral geniculate nucleus to the optic radiations and then, of course, to the occipital lobe where the image is processed. The ophthalmologist over here is trying to cut off at various points. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt the eye. Nerves don't have sensory receptors. But anyway, when he cuts the eye at the various points, it causes various field defects. And we're going to talk about those in this video. So here we have an image of what happens when the eye is cut off at different points. But this image over here is a little bit scary and intimidating. Let's make this a lot more simple. Let's begin by drawing out the visual fields and the very basic view of the light pathway. So here we have a really simplified view of the light pathway. So what happens is, here we have the left visual field, and here we have the right visual field. So let's take a look at the left visual fields. So this goes, of course, to the right side. The left visual field goes to the right part of the eye. And the right part of the visual field goes to the left part of the eyes. Now, from here on in, left goes left and right goes right. So let's follow what happens on the left. The light that came, comes in over here goes to the left. Same thing on the other side, left goes left. In order to do that, however, it has to cross paths. Now we can do the same thing for the right visual field. Everything on the right goes to the right. Same thing over here. Everything on the right goes to the right. Now we can understand just about everything we want to know about the visual field defects. Imagine we have a lesion over here. The optic nerve is cut off over here. So we can imagine that none of the light from this part of the visual field will get to the occipital lobe, as well as none of the light from over here. So basically, what the patient will see is the following will just be black or blind in the right eye. Now let's take another instance. Here we're going to have a lesion in the optic chiasm itself, right over here. What would this do? Well, let's see. The optic chiasm, we're taking information from over here and bringing it to the other side, but it can't make it now, as well as information from over here. And again, this cannot make it. Therefore, a lesion in the optic chiasm would lead to the following. The patient would be blind in this half of the eye, as well as in this half of the eye. This is known as bitemporal hemianopsia, or bitemporal hemianopia. And this can be caused by something like a pituitary lesion, which affects the optic chiasm. Okay, let's take the next instance. Let's say now there's a lesion in the optic tract. So if there's a lesion in the optic tract, what would that do? So if you take a look, the optic tract is responsible for taking the green lines. So information from the left visual field in each eye will not make it. This won't make it and this won't make it. And that will lead to the following. The patient will look like this. They will be blind on the left side in, in both eyes. Okay, so we've discussed the, the three most high yield lesions, but let's just talk about four more that we want to be aware of. If the lesion is in the optic radiation by the Meyer loop, which goes to the temporal lobe, it will lead to a left upper quadrantinopia. If it's in the right parietal lobe, it will lead to a left lower quadrantinopia. And I like to think that T is close to the letter U, it's right next to it. So upper goes with temporal lesion, and P is near L, so lower goes with parietal. If there's a right occipital lesion, that could potentially lead to a hemianopia with macular sparing. And in a situation where there's macular degeneration, that can lead to a situation known as central scotoma, in which the patient cannot see in the middle. They could see everywhere except in the middle of their visual fields. This could be in a situation such as glaucoma. Okay, now let's go back to our ophthalmologist's office. Okay, so I hope when you look at this picture over here, it becomes a little bit more understandable. Again, over here, one is when there's a lesion in the optic nerve, and that leads to a right anopia, where a person can't see in the right visual field. Two is where there's a lesion in the optic chiasm, which leads to a bitemporal hemianopsia. Three is where there's a lesion in the optic tract, in which the patient cannot see in either left visual field. By the way, this is known as a left homonymous hemianopsia. Four is when there's a lesion in the Meyer loop of the temporal lobe, which leads to a left upper quadrantinopia. Again, temporal with upper. Five is when there's a lesion in the right parietal lobe, which leads to a left lower quadrantinopia. Six is when there's a lesion in the right occipital lobe. 
So this is a little bit tricky over here. The reason why we have a three and a six over here is to help us remember that six is usually only seen if there's a PCA infarct, but generally it produces the symptoms seen in three, and seven is seen in central scotoma in which there's macular degeneration. Okay, I hope this made things simple. I hope it was fun. I hope you enjoyed. Alrighty, take care.